D, wait for it. Wait for it. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So I watched House of the Dragon last night. I was I always tell myself I'm gonna do my uh, breakdowns the the night of or whatnot, but. You know, I usually by the time I finish it and I gather all the screenshots and stuff and uh, I'm always like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed and I'll do it like bright and early in the morning. And then I get my kids all ready for school and all that stuff. And here we are. I got my coffee. I'm ready to go. So I just want to say I love this show. It is it is thrilling. I mean, just like there's one scene in here, like right at the beginning at the funeral where it's just like, ooh, ooh where you're just like with popcorn all like. What's going to happen, guys? Hmm? And um, I really, I really do enjoy this show. Um, I think that they're taking the book and I think they're adapting it very well. A little too fast for my taste. But at the same time, I, I have faith in them because they're doing such a good job as of now. They did change one thing from the book, but I believe it was for the better. Um, and I'll talk about that when I get to it. Uh, it, it didn't bother me. Um, and they also they they change stuff, you know, uh, throughout. Uh, well, the, in the book, it's different because the book, it has like different versions, like Mushroom will say one thing and Mushroom is this little, little um, like a court jester or whatever, but he's like a little, little. And then, you know, a Septon will say something or like that. Uh, will contradict that. And they're trying they're just gathering all these stories and then giving them out to you. Um, but I just want to say the acting is very good in this. The CGI is good. The the locations are great. Uh, the story's great. Everything's good about this show. I really do enjoy it, and I hope you guys do too. If you don't, uh, I mean, I don't understand, but whatever. What do I know? Okay. In saying that, I am going to break down this episode, but before I get started, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm and small channels like mine, we always get shoved to the back of the line. So I please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. So now that we got that out of the way, let's do this. So it starts off with, um, uh, 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 um, what's her face? Uh... Um, Liana, Liana's funeral. Poor Liana, I feel bad for her. Really liked her a lot. Okay, so it starts off with her funeral, and um, the uncle, I can't remember his name on the top of my head. He's talking about their blood, uh, and how you know she right now. Wow, it says uh, we join today at the sea, seat of the sea, and everything. And there's her casket, and it looks like her. It's very beautiful. Like, look at that. It's very beautiful. Um. And there's her mother and her father, you know, mourning and stuff. There's her daughters, and I feel bad for them. How cute are they? And then here's the rest of the family. And um, I really, I, you know, you can see uh, um, Lenor. He's really upset and, <laughs> and all that stuff. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I've got, uh, I've got some. Um, anyway, so, so he's talking about how their, their salt courses through their Valerian blood and how their, their Valerian blood should not be thinned. Oh, there it goes. Our, and ours must never be thin, but he's looking at her two children right here. Um, because he did not father them and everybody knows, and it comes up later on like that. So he, and, um, what's his face? Uh, Damon, he laughs, which me, I go, Damon, come on, dude. That's so inappropriate at your wife's wedding. Like, don't be, don't be laughing. Okay, my dude. So he he laughs and everything. And I was like, that's that's inappropriate, my dude. So then um that's the end of the funeral. And they they drop her casket into the scene. You can see all these other little caskets, and I was like, that's nice. You know, she's not alone. And you get all these dragons floating around. Now I was trying to think of which ones these are. It's obviously like Caraxes and um uh I, I think like this one is uh um Crack, I think that's Craxies. And then this is uh oh what's her face's dragon? Um uh oh gosh, uh Cyrax. And then there's this one, one of these is Sea Smoke, because that's um who um uh Lenor, that's who he rides. And then I think the other one is Sunfire. Like maybe, maybe this one is Sunfire. I'm not quite. Oh, that looks like more like that looks more like Caraxes right there. Anyways, I'm I'm like maybe maybe it's Sunfire, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which what the dragons are. But there's there's uh, five of them there. Um, yeah, I couldn't tell you who the other ones are. Anyways, 
Uh, like maybe one of them's Dreamfire also, but I'm at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. So here they are at the funeral and she comes in and everybody's just staring at her. And th this is like, this is where the tension was because I was all like, what's going on here, guys? Uh, because it's very obvious that, uh, that, you know, they're all there. She left, you know, last episode, she left, uh, the, um, uh, the red keep and everything. So he's upset. Cause he's like, I couldn't even, I couldn't, you know, um, mourn my father, which, you know, is understandable, but, uh, and then, you know, they're just, they're just there. Look at them. All, all uh, like, you know, backstabbing and stuff. And she knows what's happening. Nobody's saying anything. The king's watching all this go down. King's brother, Damon, is watching all this go down. And, oh, okay. Now, so this is um, Helena um, Targaryen. And this is, uh, um, hold on, let me get the picture up. This is her daughter. And she's a little weird one. They, they, um, some people, um, they, I don't think that in the book that she's a, uh, um, a dreamer or a seer. I think it's a dreamer, but she's, she's obviously very weird and everything, but you know, that's her thing. Um, you know, she's just, she's just got some weird kids. And then, um, Aegon is in here. He's like, he's like, what do we have? We don't have anything in common. And Aemon is all like, yeah, but it's your duty to duty. It's your duty to marry her and strengthen our blood. That's going to be your, your future, our future queen. He's like, well, if you love her, why don't you marry her? I really like this actor right here. This is, um, oh, I, I found out that this is David Tennant's like stepson or like adopted son or whatever. But he um, was in Doom Patrol. He played one of the dead, the dead boy detectives. And I was like, oh, hey, check that out. And she's talking to a spider and everything. She's been all weird. You, you know, those types. Um, so then, oh, Clubfoot over here. Lord Strong, he's like staring at the queen like a little freak, like a little creeper and everything, um, because he wants his, you know, reward. Um, this the son, uh, uh, uh Jaceres, he goes over to talk to the two girls that are, um, I can't remember their names, but it doesn't matter right now because we're, um, we're just sitting here, uh, you know, chit chatting and everything. Um, so they're they're sitting here and. Uh, is it just series? I don't remember. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So, oh, I mean, no. Uh, Jaher. Okay. Anyway, so the son, he's, and she grabs his hand. And I was like, that's nice, you know, because she needs some comfort. And uh, Lord Valerian is talking to, Coral Coralanus is talking to the younger brother. He's like, this is all going to be the sea, the sea salt throne is going to be yours and he's like i don't oh the driftwood uh throne is going to be yours and he's like i don't want it and he's like this is your inheritance and he's like but if i have it that means everybody else is dead and i was like that's that's true and it's sad at the same time and this kid is this kid is a nice kid he's all like i'd rather have my family than some stupid throne and i'm like i feel you dude so then lady uh Ranares, she goes and talks to her granddaughters and everything and comforts them and there's Eamon looking like a little weirdo with his big ass forehead, his five head. His hair like starts right here and everything. I was like, oh, poor kid. Uh, so <laughs> who ends up being very attractive. Uh, so then, uh, you know, Lore, uh, gosh. Lenor is out in the sea and he's obviously mourning the death of his sister. We're going to get through all of this. Sorry, I'm taking way too much time. So the king's over there talking to him. And he's like, I'm sorry for your loss kind of thing. And and they brought back Otto Hightower as his hand, which I don't know why he did this. I don't know why he did it at all. I mean, obviously, you know, his daughter, his uh, wife did. The queen brought him back, uh, you know, and I'm pretty sure because it's, it's like she pretty much rules and everything. So the king tells his wife, he's like, I'm going to bed. But he calls her his uh, his former wife's name, uh, 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 Emma, Emma. And uh, I was like, gosh, oh, shit. So then um, so then it gets real freaking dark. Now, I've lightened it up a little bit, but I'll tell you right now, this episode during this part right here, I was all like, what's going on here? Who is what's going on? So Eamon, he wants a dragon real bad. And he hears the noise of uh, Vagar. And he's all like, I'm going to go check that dragon out. And I'm all like, you know. So then 
uh, Corla- Coralanus, uh, Coralus, and Coralus and Renaries are talking. And basically he's all like, they took this throne away from you and I've been trying to get it back for for you. And she's all like, I've given up that I've, I've given up wanting that throne a decade ago. And uh, I, I don't want it anymore. I'd rather have my kids. And she's all like, you need to pass on the 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 sea salt throne um, or the uh, the driftwood throne to your granddaughter, not your your bastard grandson, because they aren't your blood. And he's all like, history doesn't remember blood. It remembers names. And I was like, ooh. Um, so then these two are all on the beach talking and she's basically she's basically saying like how her, she her kids are in danger. Her su- succession is in danger um, in that, you know, and she does talk about it. I'll talk about it later also. But the, her and um, Lane or they did try to have kids, you know, uh, but it just didn't work out, you know, um, him being a gay man and her being, you know, won that big D. Uh, I I mean, I guess I, you know, uh, but she talk, basically talks about uh, how I, I can't remember exactly what she says. It was very good dialogue, though. I was like, I was the whole time. I'm just like, mm. uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, they kiss or whatever, because she's like, I need you uh, and they make love. Now, this love scene was very eh, like it was eh, 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 and everything, because here's the thing. They got a um an intimacy coach. For these love scenes and me, I just go uh, real life doesn't have intimacy coaches. You know, sometimes it's not exact. It's not making love. You know, you're just sometimes you're just rooting around like two pigs, you know. Um. So then so then Eamon and now this part right here was when I was definitely like, what's he looking at? Like, I was like, what's going on here? And I was like, I thought he was watching uh, um, Rhaenyra and Damon doing the hibbity dibbity and i was like what a little freak and everything a uh, little creeper but no he was he was going after vagar so he sneaks up on vagar and vagar is huge he's just like oh my goodness he's that's the biggest dragon i've ever seen that's what she said <laughs> but so he goes to grab the reins um and vagar wakes up and he's all like, oh, no, you did it. And at first he just leaves him alone. But then the kid goes to grab the reins again. He's like, and then he's ready to Dracari's his ass. But he's all like, you know, he's all like, ah, blah, 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 blah. I don't know the words for it because I don't speak high Valyrian. But the dragon calms down and he gets on and he ride, He starts riding Vagar. Then the two girls wake up and they're all like, you know, a little upset. So he flies off and he's he's almost falling off at time like this one. I'm all like, man, kid, seatbelt. But he's flying and he's all like, woohoo, and everything. He's all having a hail time. This reminded me of Harry Potter when he rode Buckbeak for the first time. I was just like, <laughs> and everything. I was like, that's that's fun. So then, but uh he's riding the dragon and they go and wake up their 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 uh cousin. And they're like, hey, somebody stole uh, Vagar. They're done making, you know, sweet, you know, doing a hormone sandwich, making a hormone sandwich. And Vagar lands and they're like, you, the you, um, the oldest one was like, Vagar was mine to claim. And he's all like, you should have claimed it then. And I was on his side, Eamon's side at this point in time, because I was like, hey, uh, what's your face? I can't remember her name. I was like, he's right. If you wanted Vagar, you should have claimed him. It's first come, first serve. And dragons, it seems like, are in short supply these days because you can't even get your egg to hatch. So I'm all like, it's it's not his fault. You you should have have uh, uh, gotten in there right away. And you didn't. So, you know, it happens. Stuff happens. So then they they start fighting. They all the, all the kids start fighting with Eamon. And he, uh, Eamon goes to bash in uh, the oldest kid's head and his little brother slices his eye with a dagger. And everybody comes in and the maester's all like, the eye can't be saved. The, the skin will heal and everything, but uh, the eye is lost. And they're asking how this happened. Coralus is upset. She comes in. She's like, where are my babies? What happened? Who did this kind of thing? And... He oh he oh they oh because they start fighting because he called the, the these two kids bastard, and she's this one's all like, 
hold on give me two seconds okay she's all like no she's like he's like we're we're done with it for now and she's like no i want i want equal i want an equal payment i want his eye you know eye for an eye and he's all like no what are you talking about don't let your anger get the best of you he's right though and she's like no i want his freaking eye he, he, she took my son's eye i want his eye and then th- at one point there she's all like um uh cole sir cole you're my guard go get his go take his eye and the king I mean, if i was the king in this situation i would have been like excuse you honey i was like i'd have been like uh this dude the bald dude i don't remember his name hold on let me say i, I got a, a thing of him i'd have been like if sir christian cole moves an inch towards my grandchildren uh you take him down all of the king's guards you take him down um so then uh this one son is all like he called us bastard and he's all like what and he's all like where did you hear this from and he keeps looking at his mom and i'm all like of course he heard it from his mom he's like and then he goes he goes I heard it from Aegon. And then he goes to ask Aegon. He's like, Aegon, where did you hear this from? Look how creepy he looks. Viserys. He's just creepy. He creeps me out. But he's like, we all know. Everyone knows. And I'm all like, man, you know, Aegon, he is a douche, but he's honest. And so he's like, I don't want to hear about this again. We're going to stop fighting and we're going to stop fighting now. I don't want to hear the legitimacy of this thing. And then this is, oh, no, this is where she goes. Are you, no, she's like, it's not good enough. She's like, I want his eye. And then she's like, Sir Cole, get his eye kind of thing. And this guy, if I, yeah, this guy, I, I just would have been like, uh, and at, at that point, me personally, I was just like, if I'd have been like my King's guard, if my grandson's eye ever gets taken um out of non-natural issues like if he falls like while riding and he loses his eye or whatever although would that really happen um the queen's life is forfeit <laughs> i would have just been straight up like i'm giving you a command and if it gets if it gets uh you know disobeyed you will get disobeyed <laughs> anyways so she grabs his dagger and goes to stab her. And she, she's basically like, I'm sitting here. I'm following all the rules. I do what I'm supposed to do. I'm a proper prim lady. And you, you have a you no know, a fragrant, a fragrant disregard of the rules and how we're supposed to act and what we're supposed to do kind of thing. And, and this is what you do. And you get away with it. And she's all like, and she's, uh, you know, you know, this is what, you, you know, people see you for you, who you really are. And as she pulls away, she does cut um Rhaenyra and uh and and then Aemon comes up and he's like mom it's it's fine I lost an eye but I gained a dragon and I was like yeah that's right kid he, and uh later on I'll talk about when Otto Hightower comes up uh but yeah basically so she's in her thing she's like she's like everybody's already talking about how I'm I'm gone mad and uh you know everything's I'm a big crazy person and Otto Hightower's like He's like, yes. And he's like, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go back to your husband. You're going to apologize immensely and be like, I'm sorry. I did a wrong thing. Naughty baby did a no-no. And, but then you're going to go. And he's like, but your son's right. Eamon's right. That eye was worth a dragon. It's a hundred, a thousand. I think he says a thousand. Uh, it, it, it was worth it a thousand times over, you know, a thousand eyes for Vagar because it's the biggest dragon. And Vagar ends up becoming very helpful in the war. I don't want to give too much away, um, but let's just say one character dies that I'm like, oh, man, that's bummer. Like, no joke. Uh, yeah. Uh, OK, so anyways. Uh, she's getting her her wound stitched up and then uh, Lorraine. Oh, gosh, Lorraine is. Uh, gosh, Lenor comes in. He's like, I should have been here. He's all like. I will be a proper and and then they're sitting here talking about how like they tried to have babies together. Um, You know, it's his fault. And he's like, I curse the gods for making me this way. And she's like, no, she's like, I love that you're this way. And, you know, I think that these two, I think in their own way, they love each other, you know, just not in a romantic situation, but they do love each other in their own way. And it's sad that that they had to go through this, you know, kind of thing. Um, they talk about how they had tried to have children. He talks about how he's going to be a good father to the kids because he does love them like they're his own. And she's like, I know, I know. And so long story short, uh, 
I can't remember what she says to him here, but she's basically like cooking up a plan. So then back on the carriage ride, uh, very awkward. Uh, she's like, I'm sorry. And he's like, yeah, 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 you're fine. I get it. You're sorry. And uh, they're they're upset. And so then there's that's uh, Vagar right there with these two dragons. I'm assuming and I'm just assuming I don't know if this is Dreamfire and um, uh, what's his Aegon's is uh, Sunfire. Sunfire. I'm going to say it's Sunfire and Dreamfire because Dreamfire is Helena's um, dragon and then Sunfire's is Aegon's dragon. It might be vice versa. Don't quote me on that. If you do quote me on that, I'll be like, whatever. Okay, sorry, I got him wrong. But I believe, yeah, Sunfire is Aegon's and then Dreamfire is uh, Helena's dragons. And then that's Vagar, the biggest dragon. And look how huge she is. I personally don't like Vagar. I think Vagar in this show is an ugly dragon, but whatever. So then um, there's, she's sitting here talking. She's like, I need you. And then these two are talking. So he's basically like, if you want the eye, I can make it happen. She's like, no, I don't want the eye. Okay. I, I freaked out. I, you know, I lost my temper. I shouldn't have. And then he's all like, I'm just waiting for my, my reward. And she's like, you will be rewarded. Okay. Punk. And he does, he does. He eventually, he does sit on the high council or the King's council as the Lord of whispers. The Lord of gossip. Love it. Um, and then these two, basically, she says, we need to get married and we need so we can strengthen our Targaryen blood. Oh, here we go. We have always been meant to burn together. Oh, because they talk about like the the sea, how the Valerians are of the sea and their fire. And uh, yeah, so basically like we need to get married. And he's all like, well, we can't get married because you're still married. You still have a husband. So then he talks to Lord, uh, oh, what's Carl? And he's all like, you know, east, there's there's places far east that they don't care about what your name is, like what your last name is. If you're a Valerian or a Targaryen, it only matters how much gold you have. And he only gives him this tiny little sack of gold, but I'm assuming that he's just going to keep sending him gold. So they hatch up a plan, right? And um, now in the book, oh, hold on. Give me two seconds. I'll explain better. So then they get this guy. He kills him. And then uh, Carl is waiting in the 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 hall, the king's hall or whatnot. And he's all like, what are you doing here? And he's all like, um, you have always looked down on me. And then these two, he's like, you forget your place. And they start it's like, Lord, and he's like, I'm going to go get the gods. So they're fighting, 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 fighting. Then um, Chorus comes in and uh, Lord Chorus and Princess Rainies, they see this body in the fire. And they pull it out and she's all free. She's like, no, nah, and everything. And they're sad. I get it and everything. Because now both their heirs are dead. And so, uh, which later on, there's some other heirs. We'll see and everything. But uh, she, so then they get married. Um, now in, okay. So now in the books, Mushroom says that it's Damon that hires uh, Carl to kill um, uh, 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 Lenor. Um, but the Septon says that that's not true. So they like, there's conflicting stuff, but it obviously the, but that's the thing I like about the show. The show takes a, a story where you're getting three or four different versions and it says, no, this version is the correct version. The rest are not real. And I like that about the show. So they do a, a what I'm, there's all the kids. Uh, they're doing what I'm assuming is a Valer, uh, our Targaryen uh, uh, wedding, you know, a, 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 a traditional wedding where they got the blood and everything. And then we go out to this, the sea, and these two Carl's cloaked, and then he they get on this boat, and then there's uh, um, Lenor. He's alive, and they get on this boat, and they're they're going out to the the this uh, that ship, and they're headed east. So he's still alive, but he shaved his head, so you can't tell his hair and everything. But he's alive now. In the book, he is dead. He's dead in the book. Um, which you know it happens, but um, in this show they decided to keep him alive, which I'm all like, it doesn't change it too much, uh, you know, and I think it changes it for the better. You know, that's that I think that was for the better, and that's where the episode ends. 
But this episode was very good, you guys. I really liked it a lot. I thought it was very good. And like I said before, I like that they changed that from the book. And I do like that they um that they are are you know doing things a little bit differently, but keeping it true a little bit. Um also this is where the 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 uh, the war has begun now pretty much uh, the war has not begun i take that back but it's getting to the point where it's going to start and you're going to have the blacks versus the greens cuz in this she references the greens and the greens are you know the queen and her children basically and uh and their dragons now there are now i will tell you this right now um in the book the blacks um they have more dragons but the the greens have Vagar. Vagar is huge. He's huge. Um, but you know, when you have more, you know, what are you gonna do? Plus, it's all about the writer. If the writer is a really good writer, and they're like, like for instance, um, Aegon and Aemon are good dragon writers because the you know Aemon is is you know they're dedicated. They're like you know I need to perfect my dragon writing so I can like you know attack. Um, but, uh, yeah, but we get, we get these, you know, but, uh, yeah, the, the, there, uh, I'll, I'll get a thing of which who's on what team and everything, but the blacks have like, like 10 dragons. And then the greens only have like, I think seven, seven dragons, six or seven, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and then there are other dragons that we, that don't, um, that haven't come, you know, like there's like wild dragons and stuff like that, but whatever. Okay, sorry, I went on kind of like a rant there, but the 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 and then they they did have the trailer for the next episode, but uh, I'll tell you right now, Aegon the character they got for Aegon, I don't think looks all that great because he looks way younger than the actor they got for Aemon, but you know, maybe time hasn't been kind to Aemon, who knows. All right, you guys, that's my breakdown and review of this episode. I really loved this episode. I thought it was really, really good. Um, I really am interested in what you guys thought about this episode. Did you like this episode? Did you not like this episode? Who is your favorite character on the show? I have to admit, even though he comes off very much like a douche, I kind of like Damon the best. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. I have to I have to wait until the end of the show to tell you who my my favorite favorite is um but yeah all right tell me what you guys thought about this episode uh go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below if you like this video go and hit that like button you know i won't mind if you my channel please hit that subscribe button i'd greatly appreciate it and i will see you guys next week on my house of the dragon breakdown and review you guys have a good week Dracarys. bye <laughs>